Hello guys, so this is the convolutional network neural network implementation in FTC. So let's go through it. So we have the in convolutional neural network, we have the input, and there are uh, different layers. There's convolutional layer, there is pooling layer, and there are some hidden layer. And uh, after each layer, uh, the value of uh, the total size decreases in each, each layer, and we have the output at uh, last so we are uh, we are more interested in the translation of neural network to the hardware so uh, what are the things that should be considered before translation so these are the things that should be considered so first of all we need uh, the training set uh, we we have to train uh, the model in software and there are various various apis uh, in python to uh, do that in high level and after we have all the weight and then we can proceed to the FPG implementation so and in next step we need to remove all the fully connected layers and bias terms and uh, there's there's two kinds of uh, pooling one is max pooling and average pooling uh, in hardware implementation it is best uh, used if we best uh, practice to use max pooling as uh, uh, it as it's uh, it makes the computational more simpler although the efficiency of max pooling and average pooling is uh, is almost the same uh, but the hardware complexity of finding maximum is much simpler than the calculation of mean value so max pooling is uh, best suited for our purpose and uh, in design consideration we can uh, traditionally it has been used uh, gpus or cpus are used uh, but in uh, in uh, in them in um, gpus and cpu they were used uh, float 32 type but in hardware um, floating point calculation are much slower than fixed points so it is best to use uh, fixed point Floating point uh, has multi sign exponents and whereas that is very difficult for FPGA. So in convolutional layer, so we have the input and there are different layers of convolution. In the first uh, stage, we need to map that um, image into two dimensional matrix. Uh, it has uh, and we have to apply the value from 0 to 1 based on the uh, gray scale of of that pixel so we have um, uh, it is a, it is best uh, practice to uh, minimize the size of uh, and the input so that it is uh, much e much easier for the calculation so when we have the original pixel we need to uh, map that from 0 to 1 for every pixel and uh, uh, there is a property that if a is member of minus one to one and b is member of minus one to one then a dot b dot product of a and b a and b is also uh, the member of minus one to one uh, so that comes in handy so in the first layer we have the input and this is a uh, pixels uh, it is there is pixel i j p i j is the input and we have uh, weights of that pixel from the software implementation we have weights for different pixels and the next uh, value nij comes from this formula where b is bias so with b w and p we can get the next value so uh, there's a term called reduction coefficient it is called m m is the maximum of uh, minimum which is in negative modulus of minimum value and maximum value so it calculates the max of uh, all the pixels so why do we need this because uh, we need to normalize all the values in uh, within minus one to one so we take the maximum values among them like if it, if it has got six or minus seven then we take minus seven and make it modulus and make it seven now m equals 7 now we can divide all the terms um, the blue and b by the value of m then we can guarantee that all the values will be within 
minus 1 to 1. So second layer does not exit, exit 1. That is the uh, rational behind it. Now there is a second layer. Uh, and in second layer also we do the same um, process. We have, uh, now we take, we convolve using the uh, formula given in previous side. And uh, the same reasoning is repeated. And uh, with every layers, the size of the data decreases. And until the last, after the last layer, the, the calculation are converted to fixed point calculation for convenience. Now there are certain problems, potential problems that arises when uh, we have implement it. For example, uh, there could be uh, if we sort through all the possible input images and focus on the potential minimum and maximum values, we get very large reduction coefficient. When m is very large, then accuracy will rapidly decrease because when m is very large, it will divide the values by a large number and the accuracy decreases from layer to layer. So for that, uh, and they, they, that will require large width of fixed point representation also to maintain the accuracy. So uh, if we have uh, like m equals 100, then if other values are 3, 4 or something like that, then if we divide 3 by 100, then it will be very small number to maintain the accuracy uh, to uh, to be safe from the round off, we have to increase the width of that value and that will increase the uh, FPJ resources. So what's the solution? With the, for the solution, we can use training set to find the, find which is most likely maximum and minimum values in each layer. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, use it to make, find the way to decrease the reduction coefficient. If you can decrease the reduction uh, coefficient, then and that will not be a big problem. So we can scale off coefficient by small margin, by small percentage. So we uh, do this in every step. We uh, change the uh, rec uh, reduction coefficient, increase it by small percent only, so that reduction coefficient is not very high. So there is another problem. Uh, the problem is like there could be an overflow or violation and uh, of calculated range. So to address this problem, we need to make a detector uh, which uh, detects the overflow overflow value and uh, make some uh, make it has make some mechanism for the replacement of it. So we need to have some minor modification in our conversion unit. So another problem arises due to the rounding error. So if you have some fixed limited bit of limited width of weight and intermediate value, then rounding error will inevitably arise. So that will lead to inaccurate prediction. So to validate this uh, accuracy of prediction, we need to test all the images through the both software and hardware. We need to cross check. Uh, the values uh, as from the software implementation. So in uh, Verilog simulation or BSDL simulation, we can see the value and we, we test it uh, in every layer. We need to test it against the uh, software implementation. So when we compare it, we can uh, find out if that's, that inaccuracy or error is error is uh, considerable so uh, which is the so it's all about the width of weight and intermediate result so the less lesser the width more the error so we need which is the width of weight so as to have the number of error equals zero so that is the uh, best practice so if we have a lot of width then it will occupy a lot of FPGA resource so we need to select is the trade-off between uh, accuracy and um, resources so uh, in fixed weight convolution there is some strategies like you can around uh, in after every 
uh, elementary operation in addition and subtract multiplication we can round in every addition and multiplication or we could uh, we could calculate every step with full accuracy and round off at the end of operation so among these two uh, rounding in every step is preferable because it increases the performance and there is not much difference in accuracy between these two strategies so uh, that's it for today bye bye